Hey guys, this is Kevin Estello with Fieldcraft Survival. Today, what I would like to do is demonstrate one or two ways of being more accurate when you're using your compass. We teach a lot of really, really cool map and compass skills, land navigation skills in our courses. If you click this link that's gonna appear over my head, it'll take you to a page where you'll be able to sign up and learn more awesome navigation courses that are truly wilderness survival skills that'll keep you from a lot of trouble. When we teach land navigation, there almost always is someone in the class that will read their compass a couple degrees off from everyone else. It's not a totally rare occasion that that happens. It actually happens all the time. And there are some things that you can do to make sure that when you're reading your compass, you are going to be more accurate. To start off with, what I would recommend is that you get yourself a quality compass. The compass that almost all the instructors at Fieldcraft Survival use is the Sunto MC2D. You can also use the Sunto MC2G, which is a compass that's designed to be used anywhere in the world. But for North America, you're totally fine if you only have access to the Sunto MC2D. Your compass is gonna have 360 degrees on the bezel. And you're gonna notice that every 10 degrees, there's a large hash mark. And in between those 10 degrees, there are five smaller subtensions, meaning that each of those is two degrees. A couple other things with your compass, you're gonna notice that you have a direction of travel arrow. Your direction of travel arrow is going to be here. There's a line on your compass and there's also a mark right up here. So what I'll say is, is that they're not all created the same and some people neglect to see one particular way of sighting when they're used to just using uh, another one. So what I wanna point out is that at the very top of your compass, there is a very large sighting aperture. And if you look at the bottom of the lid to this compass, there's one that's more narrow. If you're an old school rifle shooter where you have a front sight and a rear notch or a front sight and a peep sight, you know that the peep sight is generally going to be a little bit more accurate because you've got a smaller sighting aperture to look through when you're lining up that front sight. It's the same reason why on a lot of pistols, the front, some certain pistol front sights are very narrow for bullseye shooting. It's because when we have a smaller window to look through and a smaller object to focus on, we can be more precise. So the way that we teach taking an accurate bearing with your compass is number one, get it away from anything metal. I have a watch on, I'm not gonna hold it in my left hand because that watch will cause interference with my compass. The other thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna hold my compass low to my belt because if I have a pistol inside of a holster at appendix, that pistol's gonna throw off my compass. Another thing I don't wanna do is I don't wanna hold my compass at an angle like this when I'm reading it because that might cause the needle to get hung up on the top of the bezel. So instead, what I wanna do is I wanna hold it in a hand that has nothing metal near it. I wanna hold it flat. And when I'm sighting off in the distance, I'm going to acquire the object that I'm sighting to in the large aperture. And then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna find it in the lower, smaller aperture. So I'm going from large to small. From there, once I go large to small, I'm going to use the sighting mirror. This is really what's going to set you apart from other students in your classes or in your own practice. If you don't have a sighting mirror, you're going to have to raise and lower your compass, raise and lower your compass. And what happens is in that process of raising and lowering, we may have some variation in the direction that the compass is pointed. The benefit of having that sighting mirror is I can maintain the object that I'm sighting to in that lower aperture as I close the mirror to then place red in the shed, which is one of the expressions we say all the time uh, when we're teaching how to take a bearing. To recap the way that we're going to take an accurate, accurate bearing, we wanna take our hand that has no metal next to it, hold it outstretched from us, because believe it or not, even the screws inside of your sunglasses can throw off your compass slightly. And if you think about it, I didn't mention this yet. If you think about an angle, 
right? That angle doesn't change, but as you travel further along either leg of that angle, the distance between those two legs does. So I don't want to create any additional inaccuracy if I don't have to. No metal, far away. If I can, I'll drop to a knee to stabilize it even more. I'm going to go from the large aperture to the small aperture, and then I'm going to close that sighting mirror looking through to ensure that red is in the shed. Once red is in the shed, I don't have to worry about moving the compass bezel anymore. I can actually pick up my compass at this point and I can read my bearing right at that direction of travel arrow. If you want to take it one step further, you can find an object like a tree stump. You can find an object like a hiking stick. <laughs> Stick it in the ground. Put this on top, make sure there's no metal in that object, and you can actually step back to ensure that there's even less of a possibility that your compass is going to be interfered with with any of the metal that you have on you. Uh, be careful putting your compass directly on the ground, because sometimes when you put it on the ground, there might be magnetic rocks or uh, metal in the ground that can throw off your compass. Guys, we wanna make sure that you are as accurate as possible with your tools. We wanna make sure that when you are using them, you get to your destination with as little wandering around trying to find where you need to be as possible. Follow these tips and I guarantee you will be more accurate with your compass. I'm Kevin Estello with Fieldcraft Survival. Thank you so much for watching.